Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here and welcome back to another episode of the Southampton Career Mode. If you can't tell already, we have switched up the backdrop. I felt like it was finally time we decorated. But in addition, I do want to thank you all for the comments you left on the previous episode of this series in regards to the next career mode. And I looked over the comments and I think I have things narrowed down to one team in particular. I won't be unveiling it yet though, just to add a little bit of suspense. But that means we need to finish up this save. And I think at most we have three episodes left, including this one. So a lot will be happening in a short amount of time. As for today's episode, we'll start with a home match against Newcastle and we will be simulating that one. So the first match we'll be playing in game will be an away one against Spurs and then as we get forward to May, we do have our EuroLeague fixtures unveiled and they'll be against Sevilla. We know how dominant they can be in the EuroLeague so I think this is going to be a tough test but we've played so well including against PSV so we're in great form in the EuroLeague. I hope to beat Sevilla and advance to the final but we'll close out today's episode with a home match against Crystal Palace who are currently fifth in the Premier League. A quick look at the league table ahead of the Newcastle fixture will show that they're probably safe from relegation this year with 38 points. As for Norwich, Hull City, and Sheffield Wednesday, I can't quite say the same thing. With Newcastle tallying three straight losses in the Premier League and this being a home match for us, I feel like our second team should be more than enough to get the job done. We'll skip this one and we do secure the 2-0 victory. Hoiberg and Jordan Ibe getting goals and allowing us to win this one 2-0. And after that simulated match, it does look like Manchester City lost their most recent fixture, which means we have a nine point lead at the top of the table with five matches left to play. It'll take a complete collapse for us not to win the Premier League title this season, but we do need to focus on the match ahead and Spurs. We haven't had much luck with Spurs in this career mode. I think every time we have matched up against them, they have beaten us pretty badly, but I feel like we're finally competitive with this side. And I do need to think about our midweek Euro league fixture so I'd like to go into the break with an advantage so I can make some changes pretty early on. It doesn't look like losing Harry Kane has impacted Spurs too much. They've signed a number of quality Premier League talents including Emre Can, Jordan Henderson, and Romelu Lukaku. And already it's Spurs on the attack. We're looking to stick with Davies. He'll send in the cross and just like that Lukaku makes it look easy and it's 1-0 for Tottenham, only five minutes into the match. I knew it would be difficult going into it, but I felt like our team was ready. But you, you see, I can't get the ball off them, and the fact that they can score from crosses that close, I think pretty much sums up what kind of striker Lukaku is. Here's Christian Eriksen. We know he can hit a long shot, but instead he finds heung -min's son, and somehow he holds on to possession. It's Romelu Lukaku now, crossing it in. Morgan Schneidlin tracking back and winning the header. Let's get something going, boys, because we cannot get out of our own half right now. And that's going to continue to be the case. Spurs know where their players are at all times. They'll find Hume Min's son. He finesses it, and Pickford pulls off a great save. We need to recollect defensively because we've been shaky so far. This could be a chance for us to get on the attack. We haven't done much so far. But we're a bit quicker with our passing play. And Morgan Schneiderlin might be through. He's going to look to send in the cross to Kevin Volland. But we're just not on the same page. We've just been gifted a goal. I think Hugo Lloris just jumped into his own defender. I'm not sure if that was Alderweireld or how it is. But I'm not going to ask any questions about that. We need all the help we can get against Spurs. All of a sudden, the momentum seems to be going our way. And if we can add on a second goal to go into the break with a lead, I would love that. And Walcott's done well to get the ball back. We need options in the middle. This is Sofian Buffal on the left. He needs to beat one defender. He'll look to use a burber spin. Cut this inside. Sweat it to Kovalenko. The finesse shot is saved by Hugo Lloris, making up for his earlier mistake. And now we have a chance on the corner kick. Buffal, once again, he'll cross this in. Looking for options. That's not a great cross. Erickson gets it cleared. And we'll go into the break. A lot of luck on our side there in the first 45 minutes, but we were better statistically than Spurs. Four shots, three on target, 54% of the possession. And I guess we'll just keep on pushing on. If we can end up getting just one point out of this match, I'd be completely content. However, I do want to take off both our wingers because they are just an integral part of our team. I don't need to worry about Kevin Vaughn because his stamina is so good. But Buffal and Walcott, I want to make sure that we rest them up and have them at our service for the EuroLeague fixture. Because at this point in time, I feel like we're pretty much wrapped up in the Premier League. A lot would have to go wrong for us not to win. Whereas the EuroLeague, all we need to do is have one bad day and we could be kicked out of that competition. It's been a quiet second half so far, but we'll look to change that here with this throw on Bertrand. Finding Ward Prowse in the middle. We've got Kovalenko. He showed off his fake shot ability in the last episode. 
And maybe he can do it again here. He needs to find an option around him. This is going to be a wide open ward. Prowls the finesse shot. Will we put in the back of the net? And we're up against Spurs. I don't think that has ever happened in this career mode. But we've done it today. And things, if things continue the way they're going, we could add on a third goal. Because Spurs, they had a good first half. But ever since we conceded that lucky goal, they have been nowhere. Oh, that could be bad. If we can't catch up to Eric Lamella, but for some reason he's going to the outside. Probably should have stayed inside and he would have been through on goal. But we do have a corner kick to deal with. Ward Prowse needs to watch out for Lukaku. That's the target man for them. And we'll get it taken away. Not many Spurs players back. And if Kovalenko can beat this last defender, we're through on goal. He's got the help of someone in the middle. And this is Morgan Schneiderlin. Needs some more support, but Heungman's son just takes the ball away. 20 minutes left to go in this one, and I have a feeling it's going to be an intense 20 minutes. So we will look to make some changes and make sure our midfield is fully rested. I feel like they're going to have to chase down one of the Spurs attackers, and I think Jordi Klassi is the man for us to do it. Well, eight minutes left to go, and Spurs are pouring forward players. I would love if we can get one more goal, because I am not feeling confident right now. I know how the CPU can play, and how quickly they can strike. But now Jordan Henderson starting out of the back, finding Emre Sean looks to be playing as a defender right now. And now it will be Henderson once more to Trippier, to Erickson. He kind of mishit that one and will win the header. Jordan Ide needs to get this on the wing and he's got enough pace to do so. One more defender left to beat and let's go boys. Let's get this third goal and seal the match. We'll cross it in the middle to the far post. And it was Kovalenko attempting the diving header. Kieran Trippier gets it cleared. We'll have to hang on for four more minutes. Somehow we managed to see that match out, and I don't know how we did it, but looking at the stats, we did all right. Six shots, four on target, and 49% of the possession. We'll see who the man of the match goes to, and it's Victor Kovalenko with a 9.0, Kevin Vaughn with an 8.3, Ward Prowse with an 8.8, .8, and Ryan Bertrand with an 8.1. All respectable performances. Just prior to our EuroLeague fixture, we do have a squad report to review. And this will be our last one prior to the end of season review. Uh, so it will be important to look through these players and see if there's anyone that I do want to incorporate into our plans for the remainder of this season. But to be completely honest with you guys, I don't think I'll be adjusting my strategy too much. If it ain't broke, there's no reason to fix it. And lately we've been on a pretty impressive winning streak, maybe even the best winning streak of the career mode. So it's a matter of good timing. And you know, that's the situation in a lot of sports. It's a matter of good timing. If you can find the right kind of shape and your team starts working together the right kind of way at the right kind of time, good things can happen. And that seems to be the case for us right now. The first leg of the EuroLeague semifinal will be our home leg and of course I do want to play well and have an aggregate lead going into the second leg and if we can manage to do so I think that'll pretty much print our ticket to the EuroLeague final. As many of you might know Sevilla have an awesome team with some great players in career mode and we'll have to watch out because they're dangerous on all fronts. It's a dangerous pass but we pulled it off and Vaughn already on his left foot will go crossbody and he is went ahead and mastered that shot because he's done it on a consecutive basis several times and here it is again probably the toughest angle to shoot from and I don't know how he beat Sergio Rico from there that's a great ball by Ibora to find Vasquez we know he's not quick but he'll find Ben Yedder in the middle Pickford with the easy save and we'll look to get on the counter attack and get that going Kovalenko seeing some space and he will find Kevin Vaughn now looking to use his pace he scored one already. Can he add a second? He'll cut it back inside. Plays a nice through ball. Another swipe in the middle. And the passing play has been good, boys. I think we're due for a second goal. There's Ward Prowse. Finding Walcott, the through ball. Over to Volan, and he is on fire in this episode and in this match. Sergio Rico does not know how to handle him. And all of a sudden, it's 2-0 for Southampton. Only 30, 13 minutes into the match. And I'm going to look to add on a few more and push up that aggregate lead. Here's Sofian Buffal looking to add on a third goal. He burber spins by one defender. Has Kovalenko and Vaughn in the middle. And it's a first half hat trick for Kevin Vaughn. I wasn't even looking for him on the pass, but he found the space. And what a performance this has been today. I needed him to step up and I wanted to get that strong aggregate lead. And he's done exactly that. Oh, Pickford, what a save by him. Sevilla are just so unlucky so far. Sergio Rico has not done absolutely anything, whereas Pickford has pulled off a couple of key saves. We do need to defend. 
this corner kick, though, and make sure we mark this man coming short. It's Ben Yetter playing it back to Vasquez. Ward Prowse having none of it. Yeah, we are all over the Sevilla team. And can we get another goal? For Kevin Vaughn. We'll play it in the middle. Set him up on his left foot. The finesse shot going over the crossbar. That is the first time he shot. And it's not been on target. And I can't blame the guy. I don't think anyone was expecting this kind of performance. And this kind of stomping in just 45 minutes of play. Five shots, four on target, and 44% of the possession. And I'm just not sure how these stats add up. Sevilla haven't played badly per se, but their keeper has not done well. Just one change at halftime. Hoiberg is going to get some play time coming in for Ward Prowse. No way. No way is he going to get a fourth. Kevin Vaughn is too good. This Sevilla defense just, they don't know a way to stop him and we continue to find him in space. We know his finishing in front of goal has been good. But it's been excellent in this match. We've got 20 minutes left to go in this one. And with a four goal cushion, I think it's safe to make two more changes and use up all of our subs. Kovalenko pretty tired from this match. And we don't really have a proper center attacking mid, unfortunately. So I think I'll go with Thierry Ambrose. Um, just a player that can make a big impact on the game. And along with that, Sofian Buffal. Want to make sure he's rested up so he'll be coming off. We just need to keep our shape defensively and hang on to this four goal aggregate lead. There's no reason to get greedy and uh, add a fifth, but if the opportunity presents itself, hey, you know, I'm not going to be missing out on that. And Vaughn trying to play through to Ambrose. He was trying to play it back to Vaughn for his fifth goal, but it's not just going to happen like that. And all of a sudden, it's Ben Yetter who's through. He's got to be looking for his partner in crime, but Ruben Semedo tracks back. And we won't be conceding. There is full time and what a match that was for us. Nothing really too dominant about the statistics. Eight shots, five on target, 43% of the possession. But we were just more clinical than Sevilla. And that resulted in a 4-0 scoreline. Man, the match, I don't think there's any question about that. Kevin Ball with a 10.0 and great performances all across the board. Our final match of the episode against Crystal Palace could actually be the Premier League title clincher for us. If we were to win, that would put us up to 79 points, an 11 point lead over Manchester City with three matches left to play. So obviously this is a big one. Unfortunately, due to stamina issues, we're not able to field a first team. But as you guys saw for the last episode, our second team is more than capable of getting the job done. And we actually have Dushan Tadic back in the starting 11. He's recovered fully from his injuries, but we'll be giving the captaincy to James Ward-Prowse, starting to think about the future and what kind of role he might play for us. Crystal Palace have been able to put together a promising roster of young players, but the thing I'm most excited for, for this match, is having the opportunity to win the Premier League title here at home in front of the fans at St. Mary's. Um, well that happened quickly. It's Exiki or Exiki. He gets the first goal of the match. Crystal Palace off a free kick. He just rose up and that's a beautifully placed header. There's nothing Jordan Pickford could have done about it. And we probably should have defended that better. Good tackle. And somehow we need to win it back. That could be a foul, but the ref will let us play on. Dushan Tadic has plenty of options around him. He'll find Rodriguez. He'll use some of his skill moves to play his back inside the box. Tadic. Another pass in the middle. It's Sam Gallagher. One more pass, and we're just doing too much. We need to be simpler. It's a throw in for us, and I think we need to start adopting a different mentality. We're trying to do too much dribbling and not enough crossing with a big man in Sam Gallagher. I think we need to do more of that. But instead, Matt Target playing in the middle. Ward Prowse gets taken out. We'll play this through once more. Gallagher is through on goal, and we might be able to tap this in. Somehow, no one got their leg on it. We'll keep on playing. Target. In to Jay Rodriguez. He was a goal scorer in season one. And he just about did it again there. He's onside. I don't know what you're talking about, Crystal Palace player. And Matt Target playing it in the middle. This is a gear eight. It has to be a sweat to Sam Gallagher. And he'll finish that one. It'll be tied up 1-1 going into the halftime break. And that is the goal we needed. We just needed to get the goal by Steve Mandanda. Kind of hinder his confidence a little bit. And get a second goal here in the second half. As we look at the stats at the halftime break. It's been a close one. But I think Crystal Palace need to seriously be concerned. That one of their players will be sent off with a second yellow card. Currently three individuals have a yellow card in their side. A lot of them in the midfield and the defense. One change for 
us at the break, we're going to bring on Stepanak for Jordi Klossi, see if he can recreate some of his great form. Oh, this could be bad. It's Zaha, who clearly has more pace than Yoshida, but we'll still look to contain him here. The cross sent in the middle. It's Aguirre to win the header. Now it's Andres Townsend. We need to close him down. Pickford, big save. All right, 20 minutes left to go and still two changes that we can make. I'm going to bring Sam Gallagher off and bring on Ambrose because he just has more pace than Gallagher. And that leaves us with one change left. And I think it's Kortuk that we need to bring on because he can impact the midfield with his five-star skills. And we'll bring him on over Dushan Tadic. Ambrose looking to play this over the top ball to Nathan Dyer. And that was spot on. We do need some support in the midfield. We don't have much, and Kabai ends up getting hold of possession. Crystal Palace might just be looking for a draw here because they don't seem to be in any hurry. Well, despite it being a close match, we weren't quite able to pick up a win, so our quest for securing the Premier League title will have to wait to another day. That is unless Manchester City picked up a draw or a loss. But guys, that'll wrap things up for today's episode of the Southampton Crew Mode. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new around here. And if you're interested, you can follow me on my socials. Links to those are provided in the description down below. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.